joins us now. He's a sports editor at the DailyNational.com. Mike, I know you've been watching these games. Mm -hmm. Let me begin with Eileen Gu. Wow, she is absolutely brilliant, talented, smart, uh, poised, graceful, and on top of it, she seems like a really nice person. What is next for this American born 18 year old who's competing for Team China? Whatever she wants. You just mentioned all of those adjectives that, that make up this amazing story. Not only is she amazing doing what she's doing, winning gold, but also off, off of the, the slopes just in terms of this brand that she's building for herself. She is really going to become one of the breakout stars of the Olympic Games. Certainly, she had a lot riding on her. San Francisco born, her mother being uh, Chinese, so, so uh, being on that Olympic team. But this is just one of those stories, and we hear so much, many stories you know, this year, Nathan Chen is rising to the occasion. Four years ago, he didn't. Where you, you have these athletes that you have your eyes on, and then they don't rise to the occasion, as she certainly is. And let's talk about Nathan Chen. Wow, what a redemption after that disaster four years ago. Uh, and is he, what is, what is next for him? <laughs> I, I, I go back to whatever he wants. I mean, he. <laughs> but he I mean, is in terms right of now, competing, Mike. I mean, are they? Yes. Are, they're not done in the, with the Olympics, obviously. No, no, not not done with the Olympics. He he set, set a short program record in his last competition. So again, he is riding high right now. He still has multiple events and the team competition still to go. So again, he's one of these athletes that we have our eye on because not only is he a redemption story, but now he just falls into another category of just Olympic superstars that are having record-breaking events. And that's really something that we're looking forward to, not only from the figure skating side on, on the men's side, but certainly from the women's side with this 15-year-old Russian prodigy who's burst onto the scene as well, making uh, a name for herself. So those two, along with Eileen Go and a couple of the others, are really the names to watch. All right, so let's talk about defending champion Michaela Schifrin. Mm. Wow, I watched her... I believe yeah. it was Sunday, and I just gasped when she, um, I don't know what the proper skiing term <laughs> is, but she basically slipped or fell on ice. She missed a gate, I believe. Is she so, missed a gate? Yeah. yeah, so can she, how do you, I guess, as an Olympic athlete, when there's so much expectation and high hopes for your performance and something like that happens, can you really rebound? Not in her case, and unfortunately, this is a situation where she's had so much going on leading up to these games. She was a Sports Illustrated cover athlete a year ago. Her father passed away. So this is one of those Olympic stories and Olympic moments that a lot of people were pulling for her, and now she just becomes somewhat of an Olympic footnote. When, when you do miss a gate and when you do have a wipeout, puts you so far behind that you really can't compete uh, the rest of the way. So unfortunately, she's going to be one of these stories. Becomes a bit of an afterthought every four years. These uh, athletes come along and you're hoping for the best. And they, you know, they're not playing next season. They're not playing next week. This is what everyone is training and planning for. And when you do have such a bad wipeout as she had, when you do miss a gate, those really spell catastrophe, especially when you're doing the giant uh, slalom that she's in. You know, I feel bad for two athletes here. One is Vincent Joe, who we had to withdraw from the competition after testing a positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how he tested positive with test after test. He says he's 99% asymptomatic. And another athlete, figure skater Ju Yi, who faced a barrage of ugly, nasty attacks on Chinese social media after she fell on the ice while performing her short program. I mean, I just feel so bad for them. You have to feel so bad for them. These are not highly compensated athletes. Certainly there are sponsorships that go into this, but, but when it comes down to it, there's just so much that is going on from a pressure perspective just from being in the Olympic Games, let alone testing every day, let alone not having that Olympic Village experience. All of the other parameters that go into it, not having spectators at your events. So as you mentioned, some of the social media vitriol and some of the articles that are written about them really cuts to the matter of anti the Olympic spirit. Obviously, these are athletes, so they should be held accountable for their performances. But this is just such a pressure cooker of an experience, even with Michaela Schifrin you know, going down the way that, that she did. 
you almost have so much invested in these athletes because it is once every four years that when they don't rise to the occasion, that's where the vitriol comes out and that's where we're seeing it now. People should just be a lot nicer. I'm going to uh, <laughs> leave it there. Mike Bacco, thank you very much. Thank you. The Academy Award